Hey everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you are interested in learning about what's new in V-Ray 5, then you are definitely in the right spot. I'm Lon Gross, the head of creative at Chaos, and I'll be walking you through an overview of what we've included in V-Ray 5. Uh, I'm joined by Peter Matanov, our product specialist for V-Ray 5 for 3DS Max, who's joining us from his home office or his, his uh, kid's home office. And uh, he's going to be giving us a live demo at a few parts to uh, showcase some of the new features. And we've also got Vlado Koylazov, our co-founder and CTO, who is joining us from his home. And let me hand it over to Vlado just to say a few words to kick it off. Hey, guys. Um, so this is my first webinar. I haven't actually done these before, uh, which is surprising. Uh, but uh, I just want to make a short introduction here. Um, uh, so V-Ray 5 for, uh, was released last week. For us, it's a big release, quite a big release. Um, actually, we planned it uh, months in advance. I think it was uh, last summer when Peter Matanov and uh, I sat down and, and planned the list of features for um, the release. So um, it will be almost a, a year since uh, we started doing that. Um, so, uh, we plan to do the actual release at Total Chaos um, at the end of May, but unfortunately we uh, couldn't do Total Chaos this year. Um, but still we kept the, the release date, date um, just a two weeks uh, delay. Um, and uh, even though, as you know, with the uh, whole COVID-19 uh, pandemic, Things were a little weird, but we still managed to uh, uh, finish the release on time. And I'm actually uh, pretty proud of it. Uh, many of the features that we included in the release actually came from user wishes. Um, as you know, we, we look at the wish list section on our forum, uh, but also whenever uh, people want something, uh, we take a note. Uh, we also do a lot of customer visits and calls uh, throughout the year to learn about how people are using V-Ray, what kind of features that we want to see uh, in the product. Um, and obviously some of the ideas are our own and we want to see uh, how they will turn out. So we took all of that, we organized it, and we, we picked a few things that we thought would be interesting to do for uh, V-Ray 5. And um, also, we use this opportunity to actually simplify V-Ray quite a bit. So if you take a look at the interface, you will see that some settings are no longer visible in the user interface uh, because we really didn't uh, think that there is a need to adjust up so many knobs and spinners anymore. So it's a lot uh, simplified uh, and hopefully uh, easier to use as well. And um, also interesting about this release is that we uh, collaborated with the Corona team uh, quite a bit. Um, if you are also following the development of Corona, you will probably see that, that some of the VRA features uh, leaked into Corona, like the, the lens effects, the adaptive dome light, and some features went the other direction, like the new sky model, the, the blue noise sampling. Um, and it was a, a really cool way to work with those guys, and I hope that we can continue uh, doing that in the future. Um, and uh, like I said, that the end of the release, the last few months have been really weird with people working from home. So we had to adjust to, to a new situation, um, doing uh, meetings through Hangouts and stuff. Uh, but it kind of worked out okay in the end. So uh, we'll probably continue working in a similar way um, in the future as well. Um, and uh, before we actually start, I want to uh, say a huge thank you to the whole uh, 3ds Max uh, team um, in our company, the 3ds Max. But also, uh, this release is, is not done just by the Max team. A lot of other teams join the development. Um, the new frame buffer, which is one of our new uh, main features, and you will see it in the webinar, uh, it was actually started by Vlad Nedev, who is the developer of Vray for Moto. Um, and then um, the Max guys took it and developed it further, but we also got people joining from uh, very from Unreal, from our uh, R&D team, our user interface team, um, the 3D team helped a bit. Many other people in the company also provided feedback and helped us to make the frame buffer uh, 
even better than we had originally planned. Um, other things like uh, the improvements to the VRA material, the new sheen and coat layers, they were done by uh, the VRA for Maya team, and then we uh, just ported them for 3ds Max. Uh, the same is true for the light path expressions. Um, the material library that, that is now available in VRA 5 uh, was developed by our 3D department, um, and our support team joined as well to polish the materials and update them with the newest settings in VRA. Um, also, a lot of people helped our GPU team developing, uh, helping to develop all the new features so that they work both on the CPU and the GPU right from the start, um, so that our GPU team can actually focus on implementing uh, stuff like uh, out of core and improving the RTX support. Um, I myself did only a few uh, little things in this re release. I did the uh, ACCG support, I did the stochastic tiling. Uh, the porting of the new Sky model in the Blue Noise sampling from uh, Corona, um, and other little bits and pieces, but mostly this release was done by um, our developers. So uh, that, that was really, really cool. Um, and before uh, we start, uh, just a few words about VRA GPU. Uh, because uh, even though out of core is our uh, main feature and we spent a lot of uh, development time on that, we also did other things like 2D displacement, proper matte shadows uh, for the GPU. Um, the light mix is there as well. Uh, all the new features like the code and machine, the light pack expressions, the UV randomizer, all of that stuff works on the VR GPU as well. And uh, so, I won't talk anymore, um, so let, let's jump into the release itself and all of the cool new features. So uh, I'll pass it back to Lon. Great, thanks Vlado for that uh, intro. Um, the first thing I'd like to, to do is give a shout out to Tony Bratenchevich for providing us this amazing uh, artwork as the lead image that you're seeing here on the webinar, but also on our website and in social media and other places. Uh, Tony is a 3D Digimat artist at Blizzard. Uh, he spent a while on their cinematics team as a modeler and was at uh, Blur before that as a lead assembly artist. So thanks, Tony, for, for this image. Um, before we dive into V-Ray 5, it's probably a good idea just to recap a few of the important things that came out in V-Ray Next. One, is that overall it was faster. So there was 25% faster in ray tracing overall. GPU rendering because of a new architecture uh, is actually two times faster in a lot of cases. And then for those scenes that have image-based lighting with a dome light, we were able to uh, increase the speeds of those up to seven times faster. So in, in a lot of ways, Next laid the groundwork for, for uh, a lot of great things in terms of speed improvements. Uh, this is a scene by artist uh, Mikhail Ricciotti, and if you get a chance, you should check out his art station. It's pretty impressive. In this scene, I don't know if you've ever come across these types of scenes yourself, but um, we know that a lot of artists have scenes with thousands of lights. And so building even prior to what we had in Next was uh, adaptive lights for scenes to get up to seven times faster for that. So in V-Ray 5, we asked ourselves, you know, where were the pinch points in, in artist workflows? Where could we expand rendering as well beyond rendering? So in places that uh, you wouldn't necessarily expect your render to do, things like compositing and light mix and so on. So you'll see in, in this presentation where we're going to talk about quite a, few, quite a few new tools that have been added. Um, the heroes probably are light mix and layer compositing. And, uh, and you're going to see Peter give a live demo of these in just a minute. We've added a new sun and sky, plenty of new material properties, like a new material manager with a library that comes with over 500 materials, uh, new presets, previews. Um, we added lots of tools to create randomization and textures and, and materials, as well as uh, improved dirt. And then some of the more technical enhancements uh, beyond what Vlado just mentioned in terms of V-Ray GPU improvements, we've added a blue noise sampler, uh, some light path expressions, which we'll talk about, and ACES CG for color workflows. 
So as we dive into each of these, if you have questions that you'd like to have us answer sort of at the end of this, please add them to the question, uh, question part of the chat and we'll do our best to answer a few at the end. Um, stay tuned as well because we've got a couple more things that we want to show you uh, that we've been working on. Hey, well, so, before we get started, uh, sure. sorry, just uh, wanted to jump in and uh, actually say a huge thank you to Peter Matanov uh, for helping us push this release um, out the door. Uh, a lot of the stuff that, that you see in this release and that we're going to show you um, was, uh, was actually a lot of his ideas went into that and uh, he was basically the main guy uh, driving this release. Um, so I'm just saying this to make him even more uncomfortable than he is right now. <laughs> uh, but a yeah, huge, huge thanks to Peter for uh, pushing this release out. Yeah, and and thank you, Peter, for opting to do a live demo on the webinar. Um, you know, let's hope it all goes okay. <laughs> uh, thank you. So, I'm I'm really nervous now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so so as I mentioned, uh, light mix is probably one of the more requested features that we've received, and and really what's exciting about this is you can render your scene once. And from that, generate all kinds of lighting scenarios from that single render without having to re-render it again. Um, and Peter is going to show you in the live demo exactly how to do this and how to interactively uh, adjust your lights. So another quick thanks to Nikos Nikolopoulos from Creative Lighting, who provided us this image, uh, these series of images that he worked up for us. And this is an artist's retreat. It looks like a great place to, to go writing. And he's um, Nikos has, has created lots of different scenarios just from that one single render where you can see that the mood and the theatrics all change depending on what lights you turn on and off, uh, how bright or intense they are, what colors you adjust them to. Even experimented with different color palettes here, um, sort of the green and orange if you want a bit more of a mysterious look or red and blue. Uh, just really amazing stuff that you can do straight from one single render. And in this image, this might be a uh, house that you recognize from the movie Big Lebowski. Uh, it's the um, the Sheets Gold Goldstein house that was designed by John Lautner. And it's here in Los Angeles. It's a place that I hope to get to and visit uh, sometime soon. This is a series of images created with a scene from uh, Bertrand Benoit. And you can see as I step through, we'll look at the individual sort of light switches turned off on and off. So these are the lights outside. These are the lights inside that are adding that direct or indirect light. Uh, here's the lights turned on with a little bit of a different mood to it. And of course, here's the final image created with the lens effects and, and all of the, the good qualities that, that you want from your final. Another image from uh, Bertrand Benoit, who has been sharing this on social media, um, and he says he's been really enjoying the kind of creative flexibility you get from Lightmix to set moods and, and look at uh, scenes in a different way. So in addition to Lightmix, in the new V-Ray frame buffer, we've added the ability to composite your images directly, which means that you don't need to send it out to a separate application to uh, set your blending modes or make color corrections or even combine your render elements. And we've even added a new render element that's going to be released soon in a hotfix called Back to Beauty, which uh, Peter can show in a minute here that will take all of your render elements and essentially composite them all back together the way that you would like them to, giving you the ability to add um, any color corrections or, or that on top of it. So. Let's kick it over to Peter for a few minutes here to give you a better tour of the frame buffer, as well as show you the light mix and compositing in action. Um, one second as I make Peter the presenter. Uh, can you see my screen? Well, yep, yep. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'll make a short demo of the key features of our new VFB. Uh, first, let's take a quick tour around it from left to right. Uh, here is the well known VFB history panel. 
uh, we've added the search filter, which looks in the image names and notes for your, what you type in. Uh, for example, let's type, sorry, uh, multi. So as you see, uh, only images that have multi in their names are shown. Uh, when I load it up, uh, you can see in the bar below the image. Uh, you can find there, you can find the new pixel info section with some useful uh, options. And before jumping into the most important part of the layers panel, uh, I'll load an image from a scene you might recognize from our V-Ray 5 release video. Clear that filter, the image. Uh, as you see, the image is uh, zoomed on 50%, so I will zoom it on 100. So those red lines that you're seeing uh, tells you that you're not seeing the whole image. That's a little helper there. So uh, I should resize my frame buffer and even hide the history because I don't need it now. And now let's proceed to adding light mix. It's pretty simple in render setup. In render elements, you just uh, add V-Ray light mix. Uh, the only thing you must consider before using light mix is how you are going to organize your scene lights. In this particular case, uh, they are grouped in different layers, so the selected modes should be layers. You can see them on the left, but they are grouped by layers. Uh, and when you hit render, all necessary light select render elements will be generated at render time without populating the render element list in the setup. So back to the VFB. Uh, on the right, you see the layers tab where all the magic happens. The structure is layer based and it's evaluated from bottom to top. Uh, to access uh, light mix options, we need to change the source, which is a very important part, uh, to light mix. Uh, here, all the lights are grouped by scene layers. Remember that the intensity and color adjustment controls are multipliers. That means the original light values are multiplied by those. And let's tweak some lights. Make this one green, uh, make this one uh, orange. And uh, now let's see how the image will look when I add my new best friend, uh, filmic tone map. As you can see, there is a big difference between uh, now and before. You can switch on and off layers with the eye icon on the left. Uh, when we're done tweaking, we can save the configuration and then we can quickly cycle be between presets. So let's save this one. Uh, make it something. And then uh, if all the uh, presets are in the same folder, we can quickly cycle between them, which I found very uh, useful. Uh, the other two important options are transferring uh, light mix changes either to scene, which means changing the light values in the scene, or to the composite tool, where you will find uh, uh, you have advanced control over the light select render elements. Uh, Speaking of which, as Swan already mentioned, we are adding a new back to beauty render element that will give you quick access to all necessary basic elements uh, with a couple of clicks. So again, we go back to our render setup and add V-Ray back to beauty. 
uh, and of course render. In the VFB, uh, we need to join to change the, the source to uh, composite. Uh, and there you will find the folder with all basic components needed to assemble the image back. And let's say you want to adjust only the blue component in the GI element. You find it, right click, new layer, and apply curves only to this element. Choose the, the blue channel, add a point, and then you can click it. As you see, there is some blue colors in the GI already. Uh, the good thing about having a layer-based structure is that you can move layers around, like if I want to apply the same curves uh, adjustment to the, let's say, the speckle render element, I just drag it there, and as you see, the specular layer is affected. Uh, of course, we added saving and loading for uh, global layer tree, and here are some of my tries to ruin this uh, nice render. So those are affecting the whole tree, all, like all the uh, changes that you that you make to the composite, all the changes that you may make on top of the composite will be staked in that uh, global tree. And I think this is basically it for the uh, basic compositing. So back to you, Long. Before we switch out of there, Peter, can you show everybody a little taste of the uh, filmic tone mapper? Yeah, it's already on. Like, oh, there you go. And what yeah, are some of the uh, controls that and settings that you have inside of the new tone mapper? Uh, first, we have some uh, different types. Some of them uh, have uh, already burnt in uh, curve, but some of them have uh, actual uh, extra controls. So, as you can see, if I move here, things are changing, but like I said, this is my new best friend, and I added to all of my renders, even if they're test renders. It, it just <laughs> makes them look good. Do you have a preferred uh, curve type that you like to use? Yeah, uh, my favorite one is Ampus. Uh, first, because it doesn't have any options. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, and I hate options because yeah, it's way easier without them. And yeah, it gives this vivid look, uh, which I like. Okay, I myself prefer the power curve because it has a lot of options. Yeah, <laughs> too, too, too many for my taste. <laughs> yeah. Great, thank you for that, Peter. I'm gonna switch back over to my screen here. Appreciate that rundown. So with the Filmic Tone Mapper, uh, whether or not you want uh, sort of a quick look with the um, Academy Motion Pictures uh, Tone Mapper that uh, Peter showed or, or the Power Curve, um, in any of those cases, it gives your rendering a, that cinematic look. And the way it does that is it's taking that high dynamic range image, image and it's treating it in a similar way to how film would respond to light. So uh, in a couple of examples here, here's an original render um, a scene from uh, Bertrand Benoit. And then here it was, here it is again with that Academy Motion Pictures uh, curve on it. And you can see that it just gives it a really sort of beautiful uh, look. And then if you want to push it even further, in this case, it's, you know, really bringing out some of the contrast and, and depth. Um, here's the a power curve applied to it. So in addition to light mix and, uh, and the film tone mapper and the compositor, we've also improved the sun and sky system. 
And the, the big change here is that the new sun and sky sort of extends that uh, quality of light at magic hour. Your sunrise and sunset are, are gonna look even better than before. And part of the way it does that is the new sun and sky model work really well when the sun is at the horizon. So here you can see in this scene um, that's just looking over a Phoenix FD ocean, uh, as the sun rises, you get a really nice, beautiful gradient uh, over the ocean in, in, a, in a nice clean color. So a couple more shots here. Now into some of the material sections. So one of the, the big additions to V-Ray 5 is uh, the V-Ray Asset Browser. And this is a way for you to manage your materials. Um, oftentimes you create a material, you save it to a library and you wanna go find it again. Sometimes um, you, know, you forget exactly where it is. Well, this is a way for you to keep all of that organized so it makes it easier for you to save, find, and, uh, and use any material you want. With the Asset Browser comes a built-in material library. So we've included over 500 ready-made materials that you can use to create metals, uh, woods, uh, even car paints, and, and a whole bunch of other things. And it's worth noting that we're also working on a script. And uh, I believe Peter posted it on the forum, or if he hasn't posted it yet, he will be soon. So this script is going to allow you to save your materials to the library and auto-generate, auto-render the thumbnails so that the thumbnails look great. If you're interested in trying that, be sure to check out our forum and, uh, and give some feedback on it because I think it's gonna be a great material. So as we're speaking of car paint, one of the new shaders in V-Ray 5 is car paint 2. And the, the big difference here with this car paint is that the flakes in that car paint are more realistic and they also use less memory. So for any of you that are doing automotive renderings, this is a really great addition to your workflow. In the same way that material libraries are gonna help you kind of jumpstart your workflow, the same can be said about material presets. And in the V-Ray material, we've added presets for all sorts of things, glass, plastic, chrome. Um, if you've ever had to look up the index of refraction of a material, uh, you'll be glad to know that you don't have to do that for all of these, they're built right in. Uh, and the material that I'm showing you right now is uh, red velvet, or you'll see red velvet, white satin, pink satin, uh, some fabric materials that will be making their way into the next hotfix. They're, they're not in V-Ray 5 right now, but they will be very soon. So I just wanted to give you an idea that these presets are, are going to be expanding soon. Also, when you're creating materials, you want to make sure that what you see is exactly what you get. And so we made an update to the scene that renders your material previews to include nicer lighting and probably most importantly, global illumination. So now the material previews that you see are gonna be much more indicative to the way that they'll render in your scene. The V-Ray material itself has been expanded with a couple of different new options. One is a coat layer, and I'll be talking in a second about the sheen layer. So the coat layer is for materials that have reflective coatings, similar to maybe a varnished wood floor or a coated plastic. Um, even car paints that don't have a flake underneath could be, could be used that way. And what we've done is we've added this directly to the V-Ray material so that before on the left hand side when you were trying to create a material with a reflective coating you would have to create sort of a, a base material and a separate coat material and use a blend shader to blend those together and instead now with the, the new coat layer uh, you don't need those additional layers which makes it more compatible with other things like cloud rendering and the v-ray scene files but it, it also makes it faster to render because it doesn't have to go through that blend, uh, that blend material. And here's just an example on the left-hand side, you can see just the diffuse map, the middle is diffuse and specular, and then the right-hand side is the diffuse, the specular, and that coat layer on top of it. Uh, it's a little pronounced here just so that it's obvious to, uh, to see. The next layer that's been added to the V-Ray material is called the sheen layer. 
And this one is perfect for any time that you're creating uh, micro, uh, micro fabric materials like velvet and satin and silk. And you saw those as some of the presets that we're adding as well. So similar to the coat layer, to set up a sheen layer would have required a few extra steps. In this case, uh, possibly a fall off material. And if you've ever tried to use a fall off material on the cloud or with V-Ray standalone, you'll know that it's one of those things that's uh, not supported that well, but in Sheen, now that it's built into the V-Ray material, you can, you'll be able to use that directly with the, with the cloud and other things. Uh, and it also saves you that step of having it built in. So here's a really nice look at, um, at what that Sheen layer can do. So for more realism in your textures, random and randomizations, ways to make your textures more random or your materials more random are a great way to, to get photorealistic results. Uh, and we've done that in a few different ways. We've added a new V-Ray UVW randomizer. And as you can imagine from the name, what that allows you to do is randomize your texture coordinates. So you can change the UVW scale, rotation, or offset uh, directly with this one um, UVW randomizer. And the nice thing about this too is you can apply it to all multiple materials just in one place. So you don't have to go into every single texture and apply it uh, separately. Another thing that we've added is the ability in the V-Ray multi subtext uh, map is so that you can randomize the hue, the saturation and value of your elements. So to see that as an example, let's take a look at this scene. Uh, in this scene, you can see a wood floor where the same texture is repeated across all of these uh, planks. And to really make that you know, look great, you can plug in multiple textures into each of those elements inside a multi subtext. And then with the V-Ray randomizer, with the V-Ray UV randomizer, you can now add subtle uh, rotation scale offset changes to make those textures look great. And then one more step, if you add the color variation directly on top of it, you can see how that gives it a nice look. So if I cycle back and forth between those two, you can see the uh, that, that nice final look that the colors add. And then one more special uh, tool that's been added to the UVW randomizer is called stochastic tiling. And if you've ever had a texture, you apply it to a surface, let's say it's a ground material or something, and then you see that that texture, you know, technically it's seamless, but you might see it repeat on into the horizon. Well, with stochastic tiling, it actually, you can procedurally have that texture be broken up and randomized so that the tiling disappears. Um, and you can see the difference between the top image where it's off and the bottom image where it's on. So let me switch it over again to Peter one more time so that he can give you a quick overview uh, inside of Max and, and V-Ray where these tools are. Okay, one more time. Uh, can you see my screen? <laughs> yep, we can see. So, uh, since Lon already took the surprise of showing you the tropic scene, uh, it's already summer, well, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, I've quickly prepared a simple scene to show you the power of stochastic tiling option in the new V-Ray UV double randomizer texture. Yeah, I know it's a long thing. Uh, so, uh, to show you this, uh, I will launch the uh, IPR in GPU. So as you can see, there is a visible tiling in the scent texture uh, that is above above and below the, the water. Also, there is uh, some tiling on the waves of the, of the ocean. So I will open my Geo editor, and here is the simple setup of the um, sand material. It's a uh, just a random uh, texture that I found on the internet. Of course, it's not great for uh, 
or la large areas. And I have uh, a normal map for its uh, for the bump. And here is the V-Ray UVW randomizer that is connected to both uh, bitmaps. And that is one of the other powerful sides of the of that texture that you can control multiple bitmaps with only one UV controller. So uh, I will just click the stochastic tiling, and as you see, no more tiling on the sand. And here I will switch on the stochastic tiling for the water. And as you can see, no more uh, ugly tiling. So, uh, Another thing great in uh, that we have enhanced in the new VFB is the render region. So now when you draw one and you can move it and resize it without having to uh, draw it again. And uh, the lens effects are, of course, uh, added as a layer so you can I'll switch them on and anytime. Let me just zoom maybe a little so you can see their effect. Uh, yeah, maybe too strong, but. And another great thing is each layer has this opacity control where you can control how much it will affect uh, what's beneath it. And what else? Uh, since this is a live demo and long asking just before the webinar to show you the, uh, uh, the multi subtexture and its randomizer, this is not the most appropriate scene, but I will show you anyway. So you can see the palm trees are uh, each leaf of the, this branch is a different element. So if I open my material editor and find the texture that is assigned and the leaf uh, i have a multi sub texture between the material and the bitmap and if i enter here something crazy like this and yeah you can see those funny effects and it's just that easy and i know there will be a question about the machine i'm using and since we are all working from home I don't have my office workstation and everything you saw was rendered and presented on a laptop in my kids room. So, yeah. And I think this is pretty much it for, for those textures. Uh, back to you, Ron. Thanks, Peter, appreciate it. And I'm glad you answered the question about what uh, machine you're working on because I was just about to ask you, I figured uh, people would want to know. So let's see here, take a second, great. Um, in addition to the randomization features that, that Peter was just showing you, uh, we actually found a, a great way to in, improve dirt, which I know sounds silly, but um, we've added the uh, procedural flakes to it. So when you wanna create sort of a weathered look and cracks and crevices or ridges, uh, you can create these sort of procedural streaks and adjust their strength and intensity and, and their length and, and kind of use that as a really nice way to, um, to, to bring out an extra weathering in your materials. So let me switch gears here a, a little bit from materials to uh, some of the developments that we've added to uh, V-Ray GPU. One of the big additions has been out of core uh, functionality. And in this case, it's for scenes, production scenes specifically that have lots of geometry in it and it might not necessarily fit into the, the video RAM of your GPU or your GPU RAM memory. 
And what Out of Core is a, uh, able to do is it's able to help you render those scenes by cycling in and out that information. So as of right now, this is uh, our initial implementation and our GPU team is continuing to make improvements. So continue to look for uh, ways that, that that continues to get better and better. Also in V-Ray GPU, we've added functionality for 2D displacement, uh, support for OSL materials, uh, in, in on-demand textures now support UDIM, so, so that uh, opens up that possibility. We've updated the matte shadow, so that's brand new in there, and we've also added uh, dome-like ground projections. We've also added something called blue noise sampling, and the best way to describe blue noise sampling uh, is sort of these images on the right. So at the top, that's with blue noise sampling off, and the bottom is with blue noise sampling on. And what you're gonna get is you're gonna get less noise, but with the same amount of samples. And that means that your renders start to resolve faster, especially those first few passes. Um, and ultimately you're gonna be able to get sort of better quality of motion blur and depth of field. So you can see that the, the patterning of the noise here is quite a bit um, cleaner than, than this up here, especially around the edges. And that's uh, essentially what blue noise sampling does. The next addition for those of you that are working in uh, primarily probably visual effects and you're, you might have a tough shot where you want to create your own custom render element, um, that's what light path expressions are going to allow you to do. You can essentially break down uh, and create custom render elements depending on specific light contributions, uh, surface properties, et cetera, and just with a small little bit of code. Um, one example, this is from a, a few years ago on the movie Divergent, uh, and this scene on the right-hand side with Katniss in the um, mirror room was rendered by Method Studios. And in order for them to have the ultimate control over the amount of ray recursions and the number of bounces and, and the reflective paths and so on, um, essentially without light path expressions at the time, we had to cr help create a way to sort of generate that. But now with light path expressions, you can sort of create that custom code to, to help uh, in a scene like that with no problem. And then the last bit here uh, is we're, in, we're introducing ACES CG color workflows. So if you're familiar with the Academy uh, color encoding system or ACES, which is meant to create a calibrated workflow for all different types of cameras and raw formats and footage um, so that it matches, the ACES CG is becoming very quickly the standard in computer graphics. So if you see on the right-hand side, the red triangle is the sRGB gamut, and that, that's probably the gamut that we're used to thinking about. And then this purple one is the ACES CG workflow, which is a, supports a wide gamut and a high dynamic range. Um, and also stay tuned, we're gonna be working on some uh, tutorials and tips and tricks to help people understand how to use the ACES CG workflow in their, uh, in their setups. So now's a, a great time for us to take a quick pause. If you haven't downloaded V-Ray 5 uh, already, you can get it for free for 30 days by going to chaosgroup.com slash V-Ray slash 3DS Max and uh, try the new features in your workflow and, and see where it goes. Uh, we'll take the next few minutes to answer some questions that have been posted in the question board. And then stay tuned for a few more minutes. I want to share a couple of other things that we've been working on. So give me a minute. I'm going to take a peek through some of the questions here. So one of the first questions uh, is, is a good one that probably many of you are, are asking, where can I find a recording of the webinar? Uh, as soon as we're done with this webinar, we'll take the, the video recording and we should have it up to our YouTube channel in the next few days so that uh, you, can, you can take a look at it. Um, one question is in the material library, uh, are we planning on creating any uh, additional materials to in the future? I'll leave that to, to 
Peter and Vlado there. Guys, are, are you planning on adding some more materials in the future to that material library? Um, generally, yes. Um, for this release, obviously the goal is to just get uh, what we have right now and update it for the new version of V-Ray. Um, but the idea definitely is to extend it into the future and add more materials to it. And there's a similar question here about the presets. Uh, we mentioned that we're going to be adding some fabric presets. Are, if there, are there any others on the list or if people had ideas, should they share those with you on the forum? Um, yeah, uh, anything that you want to see there, um, just write on the forum and we'll try to recreate it. Another question here is, uh, how much does adding the light mix affect your render times? So the light mix under the hood, it creates um, just full light select render elements. So, um, and the cost is not actually that that great. Um, it does have some overhead, but it's a, a few percent um, at most. Like it's not it's not going to be like three times slower or anything like that. It's going to be maybe five six percent slower. So just a few percentage points uh, as a cost there, uh, and then once you're there, you can certainly keep changing it interactively as as much as yeah. you want, or even send the the finals back to your scene. Um, this is a great question, and uh, will multi-mat be, uh, will masks be supported in the V-Ray frame buffer uh, in the future? So, Peter, that's for you. <laughs> okay, so, uh, of course, we uh, thought about masks, but we will add uh, masking at the letter phase because it's not that simple. Uh, but even now, uh, you can do masks with uh, material select render element. It's kind of uh, not that easy, but you can do it even now. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're planning to, to do it and we will add it in some update later. Great. And uh, last one here, and then I'm going to switch back to a couple of things that I want to share. There's a question about whether or not uh, V-Ray GPU supports RTX uh, accelerators on the NVIDIA cards. Yeah, that's been the case for over a year. Yeah, so even in V-Ray Next right now, we're we're taking advantage of the RTX in the latest update. Um, yeah, in, in update three, V-Ray Next update three, uh, RTX is fully supported. Great. Okay, so I'm going to switch back to uh, the presentation here, and I want to share just a few more things. Um, the first thing is that with the launch of V-Ray 5, we've also introduced a new way for everyone to get the entire collection, the entire suite of V-Ray tools. Um, not only does it include all of the, the V-Ray tools for Max, for Maya, Houdini, SketchUp, you name it, um, it also includes Phoenix FD for fluid simulations, VR scans for you know, incredibly realistic scan materials, Project Lavina, which is uh, now in beta and we'll talk about in a second, but that's gonna be this great tool for real-time scene exploration, uh, real-time ray tracing. And then it also comes with some Chaos Cloud credits for whenever you need to do simple, fast cloud rendering. So. If you're interested and you want to learn more about how, you know, if maybe you use a couple of different V-Ray renders in your workflow or, or use V-Ray in Phoenix and VR scans, the V-Ray collection is a, a really great way to sort of add to your you know, creative toolkit. And the last thing I want to show you today before we go is some progress, a quick update on where we are with Project Lavina. So if you haven't heard yet of Project Lavina, it is a real-time ray tracer uh, scene exploration tool that we created that allows you to take your V-Ray scene files, export them as a V-Ray scene, and bring them right into this real-time ray tracing viewer and explore them in real time, change lights in real time, look at views, et cetera. And it's come quite a long way in the past few months. Um, what you're seeing here is a screen capture uh, taken by our friends at Brick Visual. And in a first sort of, um, and this is from the, the current beta, 
um, and stay tuned for, for more information there. We're adding an animation editor uh, to the bottom of this that is going to allow you to sequence your animations directly, uh, your, your animations and your views directly in Lavina. Uh, also, it's kind of really worth showing here, this is an image done with a huge scene, again, by our friends at Brick, um, master plan scene, all the trees, all the geometry brought into real time with no problem whatsoever. And uh, they've been kind enough to show us a render out straight out of Lavina and then the final in V-Ray. So you can see that from one to the other, it's it's close and then you can just take it to that final step in, uh, in V-Ray. Another scene here, this one is um, uh, beautiful architecture in uh, Lavina and then the final image rendered out in V-Ray. And so again, stay tuned for some updates here with uh, with Project Lavina. If you wanna download the beta today, you can go to chaosgroup.com slash Lavina and, uh, and give it a try. I, I should say that this is a place where you're going to want to have uh, an NVIDIA RTX hardware to take advantage of those ray tracing cores so that you get the best real-time experience. And I think that's it. So thanks for joining us uh, on this tour of V-Ray 5. Um, again, if you want to try it right now, you can download it here at chaosgroup.com slash V-Ray and 3DS Max. And we should have this recording posted in a few days. Thank you very much.